And the next talk is on generalized nonlinear invariant attacks and a new design criterion for round constants by Wei Yongzhuang, Ye Tao, Wu Wangling, and Enes Pasalik. And the talk will be given by somebody else, namely by René Rodriguez. Well, thanks for the introduction. And thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give this talk um, tonight, uh, today. Um, I'm Enes's PhD student. Um, and well, they decided to send me to give this talk and let's see what happened. Okay, so first of all, the title is the title is generalized nonlinear invariance invariant attack in a new design criteria for rank constants. Well, we have seen um, so far two different works in this invariance and uh, nice presentations by Gregor Lander and Christoph Weierle. And we'll give well, we'll see. I'll explain you. This is the summary of the talk. And first, an overview, a quick overview of the talk, because, well, we now know um, a bit about this invariance. And then I'll talk about this generalized nonlinear invariance. After that, uh, a concept of closed loop invariance and some conclusions. Well, the overview. Um, as already pointed out by uh, Leander, this attack was introduced by Todo, Leander, and Saki in 2016 in the Asia Crypt. And, well, the core idea is considering an n bit block cipher uh, whose encryption function is a key, and you're looking for a nonlinear Boolean function such that this relation holds which means that you're looking for symmetries in the, in the block cipher, okay? We call this G a nonlinear invariant, and when fixing a key, we're looking for an invariant. So those keys which admit this kind of invariance are called uh, weak keys, and why are they important? Because commonly in those uh, distinguishing attacks on block ciphers, especially in lightweight block ciphers, because these lightweight block ciphers are designed mm, specifically with a simple key scheduling uh, algorithm. So these lightweight block ciphers are susceptible to this kind of cryptanalysis. And well, this is a, a, an example of a nonlinear function defined like this. And if the point here is that if the addition of the key in, after that, the rank constants, in certain, in certain cases, you can have this relation, for instance, and you'll have an invariant. But some cases, well, it doesn't work that well. And we'll see how to use this to generalize this invariance. Uh, okay, uh, there are some vulnerable lightweight block ciphers already mentioned before, and this is Print Cypher, Ice Cream, Robin, Zorro, Zorro, <laughs> Midori 64, Ice Cream, Scream, Midori 64 again, and well, it's kind of vulnerable, this Midori 64, and Simpira, Haraka, and Orcs, and different other words that probably I'm missing here. Um, and after that, um, Vallarle, Canto, Leander, and Rotella proved in 2017. And, well, they studied certain structural properties of the linear layer to protect the, the block cipher and to this kind of attacks. And, well, this is the main theorem of the work. And it says that if you have an invariant to the of the of the permutation layer, the substitution layer, and for the, from the linear part, then the linear structures, the, the space of the linear structure must be a subspace invariant under L, and it has to contain all the differences of the keys. So this is a really nice characterization. Well, it's not a characterization, but it's a, a really nice condition to protect the cipher. And also, this WLS is the minimal L invariant subspace containing Z. So as this is 
uh, as the linear structure space is invariant under L and it contains all the differences, then this set must be contained in the linear structures of an invariant. So as mentioned before, if we have a large dimension of this space, then the, the only possible invariance will be trivial. Mm, okay, I think this is the result. And in some other cases, when you have the differences, that the difference of this, of the total space with, the, with respect to this space, they found certain structure of the S layer, which allows you to protect the ciphers again, and, well, using certain cossets and, and so on, but they proved that those three lightweight ciphers are resistant against this kind of invariant attacks. Okay, so this nonlinear invariant attacks can lead not only to a distinguishing attack, but also you can have different kind of attacks in, along, under different scenarios or different modes of operation, and it depends exactly on the, on the cipher and the mode. And two natural questions arising here are, if there are more attacks similar to this, and how can we protect the ciphers against them? Uh, just a moment ago, Mayahle did, um, well, presented a, a work in which there's a unified framework to probably protect the ciphers. But, okay, the goal, the goal of the paper is to provide useful generalization of this invariance. And it's, in, in, of course, as um, Gregor mentioned before, this generalization has to be useful because you need to have a target, something to attack, because otherwise are just theoretical contributions. And that's the main goal of the paper, to provide these generalizations and to give some targets. So the main idea is pretty straightforward. It's the same idea. You look for a nonlinear Boolean function, but you also look for a pair, a pair of, const uh, well, a pair of, vectors which in, in this equation has to hold. And it's like you're just looking for an invariant of, this, of the whole um, encryption, encryption algorithm, but uh, linear shifts of the encryption algorithm. So those are called generalized nonlinear invariants, and we denote the set of those invariants with UF. A1, A2, and, aha, uh -huh. oh, I think I can use this, okay. So, in, in the tax performed by Gregor Leanda, you have to have certain relation with the rank constants in the linear part of the invariance in order to, to extend the tag to the whole cipher, and, but here, Um, so here in the generalized nonlinear non -linear invariant attack, you also need to have certain, under certain circumstances, you can apply the attack. And those are the circumstances that you need in order to perform the attack. So I won't explain this too much. And here is the, the proof. How can you extend to the whole cipher? So, well, you, you just do some technical details here, which I'll skip. Or, but the main idea is the same as before. Just this allows you, the, the linear relation with this allows you to expand and to go forward to the next round and under the key assumption, the, the weak key assumption scenario, you can extend to the whole cipher and then recover, well, recover this equation uh, for the and plain text and the cipher text, and you can perform a distinguishing attack. Okay, this is the second case, and it's pretty much the same. And after that, you can perform a distinguishing attack using this generalized nonlinear invariant attack, this nonlinear invariance, and, well, just, aha, uh -huh. it's important, well, at the end. 
<laughs> so the standard procedure is as follows. You, you're looking for invariance of the whole of the whole run, but this is the complexity of looking for those invariants is really hard. It's like impossible if n grows bigger. So the the main point is to find invariants for the components of the of the run function. For instance, you start with the an, an invariant for the Xbox, and then you extend it to the Xbox layer, and then under certain circumstances, you can extend it to the to an invariant of the L layer, and then you can perform. Uh, then you have an invariant of the S layer, an invariant of the L layer, and then you have an invariant for the whole round. And well, um, this is one technical uh, property that you have it, that uh, in the paper of Lander, in the classic uh, attack of in, invariant attack you have this property. If L can be viewed as an orthogonal matrix, matrix and the degree, and you have a quadratic nonlinear invariant, then you can extend it to, the, to an invariant of the linear layer. So the, the, this generalized nonlinear invariant, as the, their name suggests, is that indeed you can have this also for the for this kind of invariance. So it's you can extend them you can extend them to the S box layer in the same fashion as the classic ones. And also if the we're here working with the SPN network under this assumption and if the linear layer well the, the linear function is an orthogonal matrix, then under the assumption of quadratic invariance, you also have the Generalized nonlinear invariance can be extended to the whole run function. And, well, the, the natural question is are generalized invariants useful? And in the, in the paper, they proved that they lead to an efficient distinguishing attack on ice cream, obviously under the weak key assumption. And, and those weak keys are different from the works before. That's the important thing because otherwise they're just uh, classical invariants. And, uh -huh. But here is, the point is that generalized nonlinear invariants are just translates of standard invariants. So in order to protect this, uh, the, the block cipher, you need also to extinguish all the invariants for the translations of the S-box. I mean, obviously under certain under, under certain circumstances, you can perform this attack. And this is uh, those um, additional vectors that adds up to the invariant can be helpful, helpful to, distinct, to perform this distinguishing attack, even though the classical attack depends on the linear part. And well, here, those constants can be helpful for eliminating this, this impact. And well, this is the first part of the talk. And let me. Now, the, the second part of the talk is another generalization of this invariance. And, and well, of course, we'll, I, I'll explain you why they're useful also. And as mentioned before, in the paper of, I will call it BCLR for reducing time, the, the, the question is if this criterion is optimal. And well, uh, it turns out that a large dimension of this WLD could prevent from some invariant attacks, and regardless of the S layer, when the dimension is large enough. So, but here we're going to sketch why this is not optimal. So we consider the following set. We're taking two Boolean functions which satisfy this. It's like, a, like an invariant but alternating. So you, you need that G1 and G2 satisfy this, and G2 and G1 are constants in the input and the output. So it's, it's a really straightforward generalization of the classical invariance 
and we can prove that they form a linear subspace. And also, for every invariant, every standard invariant, the, this is trivial, the GG, the diagonal, is on this subspace. And of course, also, you, can, you have the invariant and the complement are here in the same space. Those are pretty trivial results, but usual, this is the important fact that usually you have more elements in this CLI than those induced, induced by standard invariants. So you can have more than this diagonal and this, and this complement thing. So as a proof of the efficiency of this CLI as invariant, uh, invariant attack, and the authors of the paper provided an slightly modified version of Midori 64. And I'll, I'll explain you a little bit quickly how, to, how Midori 64 works. And it uses an SPN structure. So it's, it uses SBox layer, linear layer, and adding constants and constant rounds. And, and the key schedule, uh, well, we'll go through it in a second. And, we perform here in the S layer, we perform a subcell, which is a permutation, and this is a shuffle cell, and then a max column, which is part of the linear layer, and then adding the constants, and well, this is more or less the structure of Midori. And the variant of Midori, it's the same round function, just the key schedule uh, is a bit modified. Um, it's, this is just the selection of round constants. It's a bit different. Well, you just need to satisfy this property and other con round constants can be selected randomly. So it's just a bit modified version of Midori 64. Okay, so by using computer simulations, they found that those two in, uh, functions are a closed loop invariant uh, for Midori 64, for this version of Midori 64. And using the same ideas as before, we can extend them to a closed loop invariant of the whole cipher. An important thing is that uh, they can be used to perform a distinguishing attack uh, to Midori 64, to this variant of Midori 64. And, um, well, here, even though the degree of G1 is 2 and the degree of G2 is 1, we can still do something. It's not that restrictive here in the CLI uh, attack. So the, this gives rise to distinguishing attack, as mentioned. But even though we have the, the dimension of this WLD is large, which means that the uh, criterion of BCLR is not optimal at all. I mean, under this, uh, under this new framework of attacks. So here's a bit of explanation why this D is, well, they, the rank keys repeat just each, each second round and you can prove that this has dimension 64. So th I have to mention that the round constants are selected not like a, like a, just some random constants and that's it. They're selected properly to avoid obvious weaknesses of the cipher. And so this is uh -huh, the, the main conclusion that it appears that this criterion is not optimal. And one strong or strict design criteria is this one, but it's, it's a really strong criterion because you just need to make sure that every rank constant is selected outside the linear structure of all the closed loop invariants. So, well, it's, even though probably we can relax this criterion a bit, but we need to work more on it. And using computer simulations, one can verify that present prints L block, all of them are resistant against, against this kind of attack. So to finish the talk, because I'm running out of time, and 
um, in the paper, they introduce um, these two new frameworks of generalized invariant attacks and works of Vain. Vain proposed a, a unified study of the, within the framework of correlation matrices. And, well, this gives more structure about the classical invariants and also with the, the previous work of, the previous talk of Vial, Vialle, uh, showed the nice proposal to study the actual mathematical nature of this invariance and, and the framework of linear uh, approximations. And what, what we could ask is if those frameworks, in, if we can plug this generalization into these frameworks and how to employ this structure to avoid the tax and, well, there's a lot of open questions here and we need to further generalize these concepts and to give um, deeper theoretical analysis of, and, well, merci beaucoup. Do you have some questions for Renaud? Maybe I have a quick question. So mm -hmm. you mentioned that there were some results on the security of certain tweakable block ciphers like Skimmy or Mantis that they are resistant to the other attacks. Did you have a look at how your criterion applies to tweakable block ciphers and whether you can find anything there? Well, um, so you mean uh, here in the, in the paper of this block cipher, right? Oh. Well, look at the beginning. This, yeah. this three, yeah. those three. You mean this criterion applied to those? Mm -hmm. three? Uh, it's, it's hard to say because the criterion is like a really strong criterion. So it's just like the, the straightforward thing to do is just avoid linear structures. Why? Because we want to avoid slight attacks or the linear cryptanalysis, so just avoid them. So I couldn't say anything more about those specific cases. Okay, then thanks again. Okay. Thank you.